the chalk one up for the Supreme Court. They have come through and put these and reenacted the stay on the Joe Biden mandate for vaccinations, putting the minds at least temporarily of some 84 million workers potentially at ease for the moment. Now we'll get into we're going to get into their actual ruling and and what they actually wrote in their in their conclusion and how it does put a stay on things now but it's not permanent but it's very encouraging uh going forward so let's get into it okay so i read through the closing statements uh from the majority opinion uh, briefly through the the minority opinion, the dissenting opinions, um, which pretty much came from the three leftists on the court. But uh, I'm going to go through it with you. We're going to talk about some of the stuff that they said, and let's go ahead and, and do that. So they start out in their briefing by saying, all right, you know, here's why you created OSHA, right? And and OSHA came about from a part of the 1970 Occupation, Occupational Safety and Health Act. Um, they were created as a branch of the board of La of the Board of Labor, Department of Labor, and basically they were tasked with handling occupational safety hazards. So if you're not familiar with OSHA in the first place, what they really are designed to do is you know, if if your business deals in chemical waste or if you're, you know, as a restaurateur, as you know, I used to run restaurants for a living, um, the chemicals that we would utilize for different, you know, for dish, dish cleaning chemicals, bleaches, um, the sanitary solutions, things like that. Yeah, they were governed by health department, but they were also governed by OSHA with respect to how we're storing them, how, you know, and, and anything like that, right? So, you know, are you keeping, you know, if, if your guys, you got ladders and stuff around the place, you know, are, are they to code, is every, that sort of thing. The idea was to prevent you from getting hurt at work, that, to prevent employers from having unsafe work conditions, right? So the court brings this out, the court, <laughs> and, and they bring it out wonderfully, actually. These are direct quotes from the, from the opinion. So it says, Congress enacted the Occupational Safety and Health Act in 1970. The act created the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, which is OSHA, um, which is a part of the Department of Labor, just like I just said, um, and then under the supervision of its secretary. As its name suggests, OSHA is tasked with ensuring occupational safety, that is, quote unquote, safe and healthful working conditions. Such standards must be reasonably necessary or appropriate to pr provide safe and healthful employment. Now, prior to the emergence of COVID-19, the secretary had used this emergency power just nine times before. So nine times in the past, the court is saying, where OSHA had tried to use an emergency power outlined by, by that law, by that act, okay? And then of those nine emergency rules, six were challenged in court and only one, one was upheld in full, okay? So, so basically what the court is saying, OSHA's definition and, and use of, of this emergency power, so to speak, and there is a clause in there for an emergency power, but it's not on this scope. And their history of using it has been pretty bad. They've been getting shut down pretty regularly on, you know, six of nine um, were challenged. And so, so basically... 50-50, they, you know, they got a 50-50 chance in total uh, of getting something through, right? Less than that, actually, because they had nine attempts. Um, six of them were challenged. Five of them were, were thrown out. So really, they only got four of the nine um, through. So they get into also the, the language involved here where it's just absurdly broad and, and incredibly limited in exclusion. So, you know, one of the things that they mention in, in their notes or in their, in their majority opinion, so they're, they're saying the narrow exemptions for employees who work remotely 100% of the time, quote unquote, from, and, and that's, the, that's the judges quoting that, um, or who work exclusively outdoors, those exemptions are large, largely illusory, meaning they're illusions. They, they don't really, yeah, they're there, but they note that the secretary himself, or the secretary has actually herself um, 
estimated, for example, that only 9% of landscapers and groundskeepers qualify as working exclusively outdoors. So if they saying if they don't qualify, who the heck does, right? Who the heck does? So that was their point there. Then they noted that the Fifth, the fifth Circuit had put the stay on it uh, to allow, this is where it gets good. So they, they put the note on it that the Fifth Circuit had, had, um, had issued the stay. And then they say the Sixth Circuit concluded that the stay of the rule was not justified. We disagree. That's just awesome. That's just awesome. So applicants are likely to succeed on the merits of their claim, which is even better. So I'll get into this now. So they're saying the applicants that are suing, that, that are trying to get this thrown out in lower courts, are likely to succeed on the merits of their claim that the secretary lacked authority to impose the mandate. So what does that mean? That means <laughs> that's almost as good as just sending a, a, a written document to the plaintiff and saying, hey, if by some chance these, these clowns end up, you know, end up shooting down your, your, your case, bring it to us because we think you're likely to succeed. And, and I can tell you from the verbiage all throughout this opinion is that this, this mandate, I mean, if, if, while right now you don't have reason to be comfortable, and trust me, Jack and I are both you know, following this closely because it deeply affects both of us. I have been dealing with incredible anxiety about the, uh, the premise of losing my career and, and losing everything, so, and having to completely reinvent myself. So they kind of scolded Congress as well. And, and I don't know that it was really a scold to Congress or more of just pointing out the fact or more of a scold to the president saying, you know, what they said is this. We expect Congress to speak clearly when authorizing an agency to exercise powers of vast economic and political significance. So they go on and on and I'll have the link to the actual document with the opinion. You'll have to copy that link and paste it into your browser because it's to the PDF of the actual document. You know how we roll. We're all about source documents. So it, it's they're basically saying after they get done in a long piece in there about how this authority is just way too vague and not explicit and not, you know, if something like this is going to take place, if an agency is going to translate jargon in, in their in their authority, they're going to have to tie it explicitly to something that's clearly not, not to, you know, this is how we interpret this. They're going to have to, they're going to have to attribute that to something that's clearly given to them by Congress and it doesn't exist. They know that, that the solicitor general does not dispute that OSHA is limited to regulating work related dangers. And they quote that because that's right from the act. Uh, she instead argues that the risk of contracting COVID-19 qualifies as such a danger. We cannot agree. Bravo. Although COVID-19 is a risk that occurs in many workplaces, it is not an occupational hazard in most. COVID-19 can and does spread at home, in schools, during sporting events, and everywhere that people gather. So it's the, this kind, that kind of universal risk is no different from the day-to-day -day dangers that, that all face from crime, air pollution, or any number of communicable diseases. Permitting OSHA to regulate the hazards of daily life simply because most Americans have jobs and face those same risks while on the clock would significantly expand OSHA's regulatory authority without clear congressional authorization. And, and that's the key there, right? They're, what they're saying is, if you're going to take a leap like this, and you're going to start, you know, truly, you know, truly regulating broader health concerns that are far out of, out of your jurisdiction, they actually mention in one of the one of the parts of the statement that like OSHA is not even the best person, the best department to deal with this. You know, this would be something you would think, you know, if there were going to be larger health regulations put out to even make an attempt at this, you would do it through like CDC or, or something else, you know, or, or NIH or something like that. But they're doing it through freaking through OSHA. And they're just like, there's just no link to, to your congressional authority to do this. Bravo. This, this is one, you know, one of the reasons we were so on top of this, aside from the fact that it affects us absolutely directly, is that this is what Article 5 is all about. You know, this is what the, the whole government overreach piece and the restricting the, the scope and jurisdiction of the federal government 
This is what it's looking to restrict. It's this regulatory agency overreach that just, you know, you're always just praying that the courts see what, what, what's right. Because well, we shouldn't be in that situation. We should not be in a situation where we're constantly, you know, waiting to see what the court says. This should be clear. This should be clearly written into the Constitution. This should not be, and it is clearly written, but the courts themselves have expanded these powers over the decades. Gorsuch, um, he goes ahead and, and makes a statement on that as well, where he says, on the one hand, OSHA claims the power to issue a nationwide mandate on a major question, but cannot trace its authority to do so to any clear congressional mandate. On the other hand, if the statutory subsection the agency cites really did endow OSHA with the power to search, that law would likely constitute unconstitutional delegation of legislative authority. So what he's saying there, this is this was from Gorsuch, and, and what he's saying is even if, even if Congress came out and gave you the authority to do this, and this has been my point forever, all right, but, but I mean, my point is exactly laying out, the point that I've been making is laying out exactly how they decided, which I'm just absolutely thrilled with. But what Gorsuch says there is the real point, is that even if Congress does this, even if Congress comes out with a statement, which they won't, because there's enough dissent in Congress that it won't happen, but let's just say they did. Let's say everybody in Congress was on the same page and they wanted to pass legislation to, to, to give, you know, or, or write, up, write up a bill to give OSHA this authority. What, the, what Gorsuch is saying is like, that would just be a breach of their responsibility. They don't. They can't give them that authority. That 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 needs to. They need to write legislation for this. They can't delegate it to OSHA. They need to write legislation for that. Very now, personally, I think that legislation should be challenged. Should it be written? But it ain't gonna get written. So you know, I don't want to start getting angry about things that don't exist. That that's not gonna get written. The reality of the matter is OSHA doesn't have the authority. The court stepped in. They did the right thing. But more importantly, and what you really should walk away from this with, is the fact that the courts are signaling that if this does get, get upheld in lower courts, bring it back to us because we'll fix it. We'll fix it. Like what's going on here is wrong, is, is what the courts are saying. So fortunately, at least this time, the courts seem to be leading on the side of the people. And, and that's... That's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. So mind you, all these regulatory agencies and the powers they possess were really granted by courts, okay? Because the courts are the ones who determine these things to be constitutional. But, but in the end, you know, that's a situation we'll deal with with Article 5. Right now, let's go ahead and, and get out of the woods, you know, to those of us, you know, who share our pain and, and are out there dealing with their employers and, and stressing, going on leave, doing different things, you know, to, to try and cope and, and to try and, you know, get your head straight. Look, this, this right now is a win. So chalk one up, have one good night's sleep, at least over this. And, and then let's see where it goes from here. But definitely, definitely, definitely great signs from the courts. All right. Until next time, uh, I have another, I have a video coming out on mass formation psychosis. So if you're interested in that, you want to hear a little bit about it, a more objective look at it, uh, definitely subscribe. Make sure you're clicking the bell. Uh, if you're on Facebook, make sure you're following. We appreciate everybody. Thank you. I'm out. And like that.